Our story starts in Delhi, place where most people begin their journey to Ladakh, including me. I spent in Delhi three months as a part of my studies. Since the first day I arrived, I dreamed about visiting Ladakh. What is Ladakh? Indian territory famous for its beautiful sceneries of Himalaya and Karakura mountains. In the beginning of October, I book a flight to Laih, Ladakh capital in the altitude of 3,500 meters above the sea level. It takes just around one hour from Delhi and the view from the airplane already proved me that going to Ladakh was a great decision. As I mentioned, Lehi is in 3,500 meters above the sea level, so I was about 3.3 thousand meters higher than I was in Delhi. From that reason, I decided to have a calm day and rest. I wanted to avoid problems with altitude sickness. I went right away from the airport to my hotel called Hestchuk Guest House. I found this guest house on Booking.com and the indoor of the hotel as well as outdoor was like from a fairy tale. Soon, I felt the need to explore the city. Just walking through the streets of Lech and observing nearby mountains was fascinating. The Turkish stone is important for the culture of locals. Most Ladakhi people wear one with them as they believe it will bring them good luck. Objects like these are used during weddings. I was also happy to see the trace of the region I live in, Moravia. The main site of Lech is Lech Palace, built in the 17th century and the museum part owns Tibetan paintings and other artifacts, almost 500 years old. There was one last thing I needed to do that day, getting the permit without which I cannot go deeper into the mountains. And then I needed to visit a local travel agent to find a shared taxi for upcoming days. I was nervous after I was told that these permits are not for single foreign travelers and apparently I will be the only foreign asking for it because Indian tourist visa were postponed during that time. Well, at the end of the day I got the permit and no one was wondering that I was alone. The local travel agent told me that they can't say if there will be any taxi available for upcoming days. As I arrived in the first October week, which is a little bit colder and the tourist season is coming to its end. So like this, I'm sure if I will get a chance to go outside of Lech and see the beauty of Ladakh, I went to sleep. During my second day in Ladakh, I took a trip to the west of Lech, where we can find a lot of interesting places. First one was Magnetic Hill, place where gravity works reversely. After that, I stopped on a place called Sangam, confluence of Indus and Zanskar rivers. On the way, I was invited by locals for a delicious chai. This is how their guest room looked like. At every corner in Ladakh, I saw new and new roads and spots 
which are worth exploring. One would need a lifetime to see all the beautiful places Ladakh has to offer. As I got close to Lama Yuru, the highlight of this trip, a view on landscape known as Moonland emerged. Soon after that, I explored the magical atmosphere of La Mayor Monastery, which history dates back to the 11th century. This is a This trip ended by visiting old monastery in Alci. Unfortunately, cameras are not allowed there. Remember when I said you would need a lifetime to explore Ladakh? Beware, this region has a lot of military bases and as soon as you leave Lech, several kilometers of military area follows. You need a permit to many areas and to some places you cannot go no matter what. For my third day in Ladakh, I finally managed to find a taxi which would take me deeper into the mountains. I woke up early in the morning and in the taxi I met other passengers, three Indian tourists and a driver named Karma. Shortly after leaving Lech, we had a view on Chemri Gompa Monastery, which is about 400 years old. Soon after that, the road started to ascend right to the heart of Himalayas and because of the view in front of us, we saw we will get higher and higher. I am sorry if some of the shots are too shaky. Actually, during some moments, I thought that I am flying in the car and sometimes I wasn't sure if I am sitting in a car or merry-go-round. Shortly after we saw Changla Pass, partly covered in snow. Changla is a high mountain pass in Ladakh, at an elevation of 5400 meters. As Wikipedia mentions, the road there requires a careful drive. <laughs> careful drive in India. <laughs> it is advisable not to stay at the top for more than 25 minutes. Longer stay could cause the altitude sickness. But still, it's probably you will feel little headache and experience little trouble with breathing. I remember that one taxi had to go down immediately because one of the passengers felt very sick. Happy it didn't happen to anyone in my taxi. I don't understand how this guy can survive up here. After leaving Changla, more sceneries and landscapes opened to us.
Later we stopped in Durbuk, the only place we saw after several hours of driving, where we could stop for a lunch. As we moved on, the landscape was a little bit more greener and also a small river appeared. And then the highlight of this day showed up. Pangong Lake or Pangong Tso. The largest lake in Himalaya mountains, partly in China and India, in the altitude over 4150 meters above the sea level. The lake also contains military bases. I even saw several naval ships. It was interesting to observe how the crystal clear water changes its color depending on the sunshine. However, don't you think that you can swim in them? In October, it was pretty cold even below zero during the night. Although the journey from life to Pangong is about 220 kilometers, it will take you whole day. We arrived kind of late but we still could enjoy one hour of sunlight before the sky turned dark. However, watching the stars in there was also beautiful. All I can say about Pangong, it's a very special place for me and I hope to get back there one day. For Indians, Pangong is connected with well-known movie, Three Idiots. The movie is partly recorded there. This is the place where we slept. The night was cold in there and also because of the altitude sickness, it was hard to fall asleep. With the first sign of sunshine, I woke up and headed to say goodbye to Pangong Lake. There was a long journey in front of us and we had to go early in the morning. After a few hours of ride, the landscape was slightly different. That's because we were no longer in Himalayas, but in Karakuram Ranch. Kara means black, and as the name says, the mountains were darker. Then we finally arrived to Nubra Valley. This was our accommodation. I used the time and went for a short walk. The main attraction of Nubra Valley is definitely camel ride. The double humped camels, originally from Central Asia, were brought here during the Golden Silk Route trade era that once connected northern India with China. And camels were the main mode of transportation during this period.
It was the first time I had a chance to see camels in these conditions and I have to say they were super cute. Although the ride took only 15 minutes, I wouldn't go again. During the ride I saw that camels are treated badly and I felt bad I supported this by buying the ticket. I woke up early in the morning with a frequent sound of air fighters in the sky, which is pretty common in this border area. I was sad it's my last day in Ladakh. I felt like I have to use every moment and explore the area. So I scrambled up a hill and had a nice view on the Bravoli. Also several stupas were visible. Locals believe they will bring them good luck. Then we had to move on to nearby Diskid Monastery. Diskid Monastery is in the altitude of 3250 meters above the sea level and its history is dated back to the 14th century. It's the oldest and largest Buddhist monastery called Gompa in Ubravoli. The local monks in the monastery were preparing for the Diskid Gustor festival. This Tibetan festival takes place only once per year, luckily exactly at the time I was there. The first thing you notice about Diskid is this 33 meters high Buddha statue. The Diskid Booster Festival is not only for tourists, but also locals who are looking forward to this event. The meaning of the word Gustor in the Tibetan language is sacrifice. The festival, which is celebrated over a course of two days, is marked by different kinds of rituals, ceremonies, folk music and traditional dances.
then it was time to move on. The ride offered us the last view on Nubravoli. We were more and more ascending till we made it to the top. Kartung Pass, 5500 meters above the sea level. As the sign says, the highest motorable road in the world. You can find here the highest cafe on the world as well as the highest recycle bins, probably. Unfortunately, it was time to go back to Delhi. Again, the flight offered amazing views and I could say goodbye to Himalayas. Thank you for watching, I hope you found Ladakh series interesting and enjoyed it.